Alright, welcome back to what should be the last video. Now, the next thing we want to do after we've uh, declared our get JSON, we want to go back over to our uh, chat.php page and we're just going to do another else if and this time we're going to have get mode and if that mode equ equals our mode that we set here which is update shout then we want to do something and this is going to be a simple query and it's going to be a select all from uh, chat where the timestamp is more than the timestamp that we send through via the get so we want to execute this query and we're now going to want to loop through all of the data um, to uh, list it all uh, into into an array so we're going to do a while loop while row equals SQL fetch object then we're going to create an array called data and we're going to push the um, the key numbers up we're going to want that to be an array on its own and our user is going to equal the row of username followed by the message followed by the timestamp after the while loop all we're going to need to do now is echo out JSON encoded of that data variable and that's it for the PHP page we come back over to our chat.html and inside of our getJSON function we're going to need to loop through um, all of the results returned from that query uh, from that request so to do this we do a dollar sign and then a full stop each and we're going to want to loop through the JSON variable which is what we requested it, all the data to be stored in there um, followed by function and if you've used a um, for each in PHP you know you can set, va uh, set names for the key and the, uh, and the value so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do key followed by the value. Uh, and close off the each um, function. So that is the same as doing this in PHP.
Now the reason we've got to include um, both the key and the value is because the each function doesn't um, default to the value if um, you only leave one of them in there. So now we can um, formulate our output So we'll make a new variable and we'll call it output. And this is basically just going to be a div. Well, this div right here, in fact. So we're creating a new div with a class of JS shout hold. We've got our hidden input value here, and we're going to change this zero to the value timestamp. Now, uh, by doing this, we're referencing the um, the variable timestamp inside this array here. After that, after the actual input itself, what we're going to do is we're just going to we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to call the user and again the same thing here and just call the message. So this will output um, this eventually. That being the timestamp, and then. So it, that is what it's going to uh, output into our div down here. So once we've created the output, what we're going to do is we're then going to actually put it inside of our div of JS shouts and we're going to append it no so we're going to prepend prepend it this will make it um go to the top and that should be it so we can save that and we can test it so once we click the submit button we should see our two messages that are currently stored in the database here. So we go submit. And there we go. We click submit again and it shouldn't um, call up um, the shouts again because obviously the latest timestamp will be equal to the latest timestamp in the database. So we can click submit as many times as we want if we do it again put in a new message and submit that and then check the update we should then get that latest message up the top there but we didn't why didn't we this is the problem in it okay bear with me Okay, the problem was um, was that the, because the timestamp was in a, a, a date and time um, format, there were spaces between each uh, 
each digit which caused the problem now what I've had to do is I've changed the timestamp to an integer value and in the PHP code on the insert I've um, also added timestamp equals the Unix timestamp of now so we can come back over to here refresh this we submit the message and update it says outputs the shout and again a new message submitted and then on the update it, out, it outputs it and now to get it to update itself we can remove this input box and on the body we can use the onload um, event and we just want to do set interval and we'll put in that update shout and we'll set it to update every second so if we save this and we come back over to here we can refresh and we should see this update but apparently it's not going to work what's that all about so we'll try again before time runs out there we go so new message submit and it's still not working okay so I'll put the quote marks back around the function we want to run and we come back over to here it looks good and we submit that this message and it'll update and now using another browser which you can't see I'm submitting a new message and it comes up in here and again so that's the end of this tutorial on how to make a relatively simple um, shout box if you want to um, swap the way it, it comes out so the new messages are on the bottom you just want to um, change prepend to append so that's it from me and I'll probably see you back in the white label tutorial series on the next video.